I think it's it's been a very rich um, set of discussions uh, that have been happening over uh, the last uh, two days. And um, w one of the things that has struck me is there are some um, concepts or rather some issues that c keep coming up repeatedly. Uh, but one gets the impression that we're not at a stage where we have a collective understanding of what those issues mean. Mm. Uh, like the term transformation has, has come up um, quite, quite often. Uh, but one wonders if we were to unpack it and uh, we were to talk about what it means in the context of least development countries, what would that really entail? Particularly if we consider what was said yesterday about the, the rate at which um, least developed countries have been able to graduate from that uh, category into developing countries or middle income countries. And um, I think that even though we're beginning to um, talk about the triggers that will be required, that discussion is not happening adequately enough. Right. And um, just sitting in the, in the audience, um, I almost felt as if I would have loved to hear a bit more of the voices from least developed countries so that we could get an, a better understanding of what they consider to be critical shifts that are required. I, th I think we, we've had snippets of, of voices from the LDCs. I would have loved to hear a lot more from the LDCs mm -hmm. than we have so far. But I must say that we, we've also benefited from hearing from um, actors who are actually at the forefront of where these negotiations are taking place so that we get a sense of what the limitations are in terms of you know, pushing for a really mm -hmm. um, radical or transformative agenda. Um, what one of the speakers said about uh, uh, needing to come up with the manageable mechanisms uh, for delivering on the development aid is, is a reality check mm -hmm. in terms of the trade-offs uh, that take place with uh, regards to what needs to happen, but also the politics of, of negotiation and what gets to the table. Um, often when you're on the ground, um, you don't get a sense of, or it often doesn't make sense why uh, transformative issues don't gain traction in, in those spaces. So I think it, it has been um, uh, a good reality check, in a sense, and uh, to be able to bounce off ideas from people who actually are sitting at the, at the table in terms of negotiating mm -hmm. the, the outcomes. Um, for me, it, 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 it was important that uh, that point is thrown in because um, the the sense one gets uh, is each time we talk about uh, the different realities that uh, uh, various populations are, are, are faced with and then once we start talking about the need for a universal agenda, I get the sense that we actually forget that in that universality we actually do need to be coming, uh, talking about differentiated mm -hmm. pathways that uh, your least developed countries need to be taking as well as your developed countries need to be taking. Um, so for me, it was um, it, it it was it was good to actually hear somebody at the end of the day say, you know, we will not achieve this without putting social justice on the agenda, because they, there's more and more voices that are actually saying the post 2015 development agenda is not just about poverty, but uh, a universal and global and global agenda, and there's a danger that the, the voices and the needs of your least developed countries and vulnerable groups get drowned in mm. this call for a more global, global, global agenda. Uh, we did learn yesterday that um, the least developed countries don't have the political clout, the political voice. Um, they're actually not the, the, the dominant voice. And uh, the same can be said about different pockets of uh, uh, communities that are faced with the poverty and inequality, uh, that f faced with the, the greatest brunt of poverty and, in and inequality um, uh, throughout. Mm. I, I am encouraged and I feel confident and uh, I was uh, actually quite pleased as well this afternoon when um, in, in the d discussion around employment and job creation, 
uh, somebody called for very radical measures and called for an alternative to your neo your, a neoliberal agenda. Even though we did not unpack that, it was encouraging to see that that kind of discourse is actually happening in a space like this, where you have uh, UN negotiators, you've got ambassadors, um, you know, you have uh, uh, largely mainstream economists and very little civil society. So for me, it was actually encouraging that that was an issue that was being raised by somebody who was representing a multi-government um, uh, uh, agency and not, and not civil society. Uh, so I, I think the, 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 the vision for a much more radical and ambitious agenda is one that is slowly becoming widely widely shared. Taking so, a seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.